Naïf, can you uh, share with us uh, what were the first uh, business uh, KPI uh, that you have uh, noticed after implementing and rollouting the OMS and after uh, a few, I would say, uh, starting and having now, I think, um, and, uh, a year to date, co completely commercial uh, seasons with the other management? So, yeah, um, as I mentioned previously, um, the the most apparent um, KPI that we actually have within the order management product team is then that we do not really have a lot of maintenance work during Black Friday or during high season. Right? This is the most apparent one. Uh, the previous experience that we have with legacy system is that everyone is already well prepared. So our would have to take the whole November or even October to prepare um, the Black Friday. And this is not have or this was not happening um, last year, November, uh, with OMS wide. So uh, we just keep delivering the functionalities without really having to um, block our capacity to prepare or maintaining the system um, for the rollout itself. And then we can see that Mexican market, uh, one of the biggest market that we have in OMS and also Danish market that we have. Uh, can even triple revenue uh, without a lot of maintenance work before and after the high season. Um, so yeah, I think this is what we achieve after we roll out uh, with RMS and and we are then definitely very confident in achieving triple or double or triple revenue in the next years. Hello. Scaling is uh, obviously one of the uh, top priority, uh, I would say, and top concerns of the brand. But I think also, uh, as we mentioned earlier, uh, customer center calls. I mean, you are flooded with uh, customer uh, calls asking about uh, the order. Uh, can you share any uh, KPIs with us around this one? Uh, so in regards to the... Um customer or agents um, touch points to RMS, right? Uh, we can see that uh, the CSAT or yeah, CSAT um, increased a lot uh, in the past year because the customer service agents can uh, can be more flexible when it comes to orders. Uh, it's also what we received uh, from agents as, uh, as a feedback that the processes or implementation that we have in RMS um, somehow quite felt proof. So they have streamlined processes as well. Uh, to really avoid issues with the end customers' requests. Um, this is what I can see, what, what I can say now, uh, because, yeah, um, the customer service agents are happier uh, when receiving customers' requests um, because processes are streamlined and the UI is also streamlined much better compared to the previous uh, system that we have. And I think also one of the most important uh, points, uh, AIF, is uh, new suppliers onboarding. So I think that was also a, a big concern uh, uh, that was, uh, that was uh, given by the management. Yes, um, on this particular topic, so uh, we decided to decouple OMS um, to the supplier onboarding in general, right? Uh, because that's how the composable commerce work. And uh, uh, when it comes to new, um, suppliers or new warehouses, um, we wouldn't even need to touch OMS a lot, right? And then we just need to set up the uh, location and then uh, the implementation work will be happening outside of OMS, right? And this is what we see as a very good approach, um, really independent approach as well uh, to really ensure that OMS is not affected a lot uh, when it comes to new suppliers. And then this helps when it comes to really accelerating all the rollout uh, of new suppliers or even a new market. Thank you very much, um, Aif, uh, for sharing those information. I think that was um, really interesting, uh, especially for uh, a very large audience that can be composed of uh, technical architectures, developers, but also uh, uh, business stakeholders. I mean, one of the key points that uh, we can uh, retain from this uh, webinar is that basically uh, fluid commerce is in the center of this ecosystem, this technical ecosystem. Uh, it's a very reliable platform that has been chosen to support the incredible, uh, I would say, growth of the, the company. Uh, architecture is 
uh, based on the art of uh, the state of the art technology uh, corresponding to the Mac Alliance uh, uh, main features, uh, microservice, uh, SaaS and cloud platform. Uh, and the last point obviously <clears throat> is around scalability. Scalability is one of the most important topic. As you mentioned that uh, many times during this call, uh, when you first roll out the solution in your uh, new and emerging markets, uh, peak seasons, peak events or commercial events were managed by the platform without having to, uh, I would say, have any human being intervention to uh, enable those uh, kind of uh, uh, peak events. Uh, which is one of the major differentiators, I would say, with the legacy systems that uh, uh, you guys were working with. Yes, um, correct. Um, I think scalability is uh, the key word besides flexibility, right? So basically, foreign commerce have or are taking care of the underlying tech. Um, and then this really helps Emma or yeah, the other customers maybe as well to really focus on the business processes or business functionalities uh, because we know exactly that the underlying tech is already um, stable enough um, so we can build on top of it, right? And this can be really seen um, in the way we set up uh, OMS in, at EMA. So we really focus on uh, business needs uh, instead of really focusing too much in regards to the underlying tech. Thank you very much, Aif, for those uh, last words. And, uh, uh, and thanks a lot for... Uh, sharing those very insightful information during this webinar. Thank you very much for inviting me.